no way we are going to be able to pull this off. If we somehow manage to pull this off, it's a miracle. It's a stage theatrical miracle. How you guys doing? Hola. Do we tape the show every week here? No, Amy. Mm -mm. We're just taping it tonight. Oh. These people are smart here in the audience, but okay. there's a lot of home viewers that are that retarded. Are that are, we have a lot of retarded friends that we need to explain the show how to? the show works. I'm not even sure well, they're friends, but they're definitely retarded. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, this is an improv. This is an improvised show. Look at the screen, you dumb monkeys. We're Wake trying up! to help you. <laughs> improvised means we make it up on the spot. We don't plan this. And like the fact that it's on tape doesn't make that impossible. <laughs> it's it's the equivalent of scenic Mad Libs. How about oh, that? Oh, that's really good. You know what? I'm starting to hate this. Figure it out. Why are you so mad at the people that are They're so dumb. And stop eating. <laughs> Has anybody ever seen Ask Cat before? Raise your hand. Who's come here a lot? Okay. We did this last show. You don't count. Uh, you don't count. Let's see. Raise your hands again. I'm sorry. I want to pick somebody. All right. Hugh, sir. How would you describe it to, you like, a men? you got to stand up. Stand up. Mike. Oh, stand up. Stand up. And I guess to camera, why don't you describe what Ask Cat is for someone who's never seen it? They may or may not be retarded. Just <laughs> here's genius, here's retarded. Send it right in the middle. <laughs> by, the, by the way, you know for sure we get right letters here. about this. If, if okay. somebody will buy this who has a retarded brother or a retarded son, yeah. they're going to be. But no retarded girls in the family. <laughs> Because, well, it's a scientific fact that girls are too sexy to be retarded. Yeah. They call that yes. hot. I was like, you on that. Oh, I thought you were volunteering that you were retarded. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know what was happening. We're going to get to you. I'm sorry. Okay. No All right, so explain to... Uh, also pretend they're deaf, so speak loudly. <laughs> uh, just say it and we'll camera will find you. Uh, Ass Cat is an unbelievable laugh riot with uh, a little bit, uh, some some levels of its of its own retardation. So maybe they can let's, connect yeah, to that. Let's cool it on that. Okay, okay. and what is? <laughs> just describe the show. Like what happens every night? Uh, that right now that could be even be a building that was so general. It could be like. <laughs> yeah. 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 Guys. Oh no. Okay. Go ahead. Um, Every night, they, uh, somebody in the audience shouts out a subject, and somebody on stage tells a story about that subject, and you guys take it from there and Hi. create a scene. Yeah. Great. That's pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. Ask us a fair improvised show. Many special guests joining us. Please welcome Mr. Andrew Daly. Horatio Sands! Yeah. Our guest monologist is a very funny man you may have seen on television and film. Please welcome Mr. Tom Lennon. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> that's, that's a lot to live up to, Tom. Yeah. Green shirts! People are titillated. Green shirts! Green shirts. You guys look like a husband and wife couple that like wears so the much. same clothes. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. You, you're easily complimented. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> to begin tonight's show, we always uh, ask anybody here for their first time to throw out a suggestion of a word, a topic, an idea, and uh, Tom will talk about it. Medical marijuana. Medical, Medical marijuana. Medical marijuana. Ooh, against it. Ooh, totally against it. I'm so against it. <laughs> so I'm so against it. So uh, medical marijuana. I guess they just, we, we have passed uh, medical marijuana here. Matt? Yes, it's yes. true. Yes. Uh, true. true. Here at right. the theater. I figured I'd ask my friend with gout. Uh, <laughs> Hi, 
I, uh, I would like to uh, be supportive of it. I, I, I understand that uh, it's very helpful for people who have uh, severe pain and things like that. I, um, I am not so good with marijuana. I have uh, the day terrors. <laughs> or uh, the horrifying uh, screams. Every, I see all of you people uh, enjoying it, <laughs> and, and I always think, what what is happening to them that doesn't happen to me when I have marijuana? Because it's a very unrelated issue for the kids I see outside the the game works, who are. <laughs> who are really, really high and playing Houses of the Dead, and it's the greatest thing that ever happened to them. And to me, it's the, it's the exact, it's a very similar experience to the only thing, I, to me, smoking marijuana is an MRI that I give myself. <laughs> and I, for some reason, have chosen to get in the machine that's gonna show me how fast my heart is beating. <laughs> And where every part of my brain lines up. Um, I can't, so I cannot smoke it. I do not, I, I can't, I try to smoke it. And I try to be cool. I try to be the guy at the party uh, who, uh, who's like, hey, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll have a toke. And then, <laughs> this is, I'll have a toke because it's something I do very frequently and it doesn't give me panics and put me in an MRI inside my brain. Um, Recently, Method Man walked by me, <laughs> and uh, and he went uh, and he looked at me and he went ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> and he was in like head to toe Louis Vuitton. <laughs> that smelled like marijuana, and uh, it was uh, again made me feel. I just I've, I've always felt like. <laughs> I've always felt like I'm not part of your club, you know? Um, which is why I like cocaine and ecstasy. <laughs> and uh, accidentally tried meth one time, but that was... Um, so where were we? Medical marijuana. I don't know anyone that has a prescription for it. There was actually a place right by my house where they sold it, uh, that sold medical marijuana, and they got uh, raided a couple of times, and then they had a big sit, everybody did a sit-in for the medical marijuana place. Uh, and they all came out and camped in, uh, right next to the pet store. <laughs> so there was a, a bunch of potheads in the parking lot, uh, camped next to the pet store, and they were there for almost 60 days. Wow. Uh, they were there for a really, really, really long time. And uh, the first like week, every time I'd go by, I'd like try to give them a honk and be like, yeah. And then, like a week later, I'd honk less. You know, and, like, mm. and then two months in, it was just like, just go buy pot somewhere. <laughs> Yay, doctor! Thanks for seeing me. Um, thank you. I think that I have a lot of the symptoms that require medicinal marijuana. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's just go over some of your symptoms, okay? And I'll see if that's something appropriate for you. Okay. So, uh, what have you been feeling lately? I'm bored all the time. <laughs> all the time. Like, I get up and I feel this ennui. That's mm. a good word, right? Yeah. And good I'm word. bored. And uh, bad TV. I don't really like bad TV. <laughs> Feeling any aches or pains? Yeah. Um, oh, also bad food. Uh, I hate eating bad food. Sure, sure. Who, who likes eating bad food? Uh, nobody, but that's all I can afford. So <laughs> maybe some medicinal pot. Yeah, well, I mean, well, marijuana. Yeah, we would call it marijuana. Right. We wouldn't call it pot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there has to be some kind of specific concrete reason for me to prescribe this you know, to you, whether you have some kind of glaucoma or you're suffering some kind of pain or... Uh, I got this Pink Floyd album that just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> you want me to give you cancer? 
Come on, man, just a little bit. Just buy it on the street. If I give you cancer, you could have it for the rest of your life. Just put it in my left hand. I never use my left hand. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Yeah, left hand. All right. Don't open that Petri dish. Just keep it on your hand. Just balance this on my yeah, hand? Yeah, that is cancer. What are you doing? I want to get high, man. What are you doing? I'm disinfecting the cancer, man. In case it's you tell me you sell jeans in this shop. You tell me this is a place for jeans. Blue jeans. We sell blue jeans, You're too. You're selling cancer to people. Sometimes I sell cancer. Dude, man, you sold me breast cancer on my hand. <laughs> Sure, uh, I'll have some crack if that's what's going. <laughs> Why not? I, I have, I have it from time to time, you know. Really, it doesn't seem like the kind of thing that you have from time to time. Crack is like, crack is something people do hardcore, and they do it till they can't get any more, and then they're done. Johnny, if someone wants a crack, sell it to them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, a, I'm not a good businessman. But. Oh, I just, uh, the wife and I are going with some friends up to the mountains this weekend. Thought it'd be nice to bring, bring some crack along. <laughs> I'm sure it'll make it an interesting trip, so... Oh, I'm sure it will, yes. These, these, it's kind of sort of a wild couple. If you're not selling around. jeans, I want you stocking Levi's. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. I, say, I said, you said something. selling jeans. Yeah. <laughs> that was odd. It's very... It's a very abusive place to work. <laughs> now, what am I smoking again? Well, it's called crack. <laughs> I don't know how they make it, but uh, I guess it's the great. It's the biggest touching thing touching me like a tiger. <laughs> Your claws are raking my back. <laughs> We've been up here on the mountain for three days. When are we going to leave and try the skiing? Oh, I don't know that we'll get to it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling I like... haven't had one urge to ski since we got here. Or eat or anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Shouldn't we go on a hike or something? Mm, we can go on a hike in the middle of the room. Have you tried the crack? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give it a try. It does make you itchy. Yeah. I thought it was the wool blanket. I, I threw it out the window. So, <laughs> Without opening the window. Again, let's start talking about this rocket ship we're going to build. Yes. We've got, got to, to get, get on it. I think it's definitely possible. We just get enough things together and put them together. Yeah, it'll work. We should empty the garbage out of the garbage right. can. There's a knock at the door. What's going on? There's a knock at the door. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I've exhausted all rational methods of inquiry. I don't know what's wrong with your car. <laughs> the only other thing I would like to try, if you're open to it, is I'd like to um, drive your car to the desert and take acid and spend a couple days with it. <laughs> Sometimes they talk to me out there. Well, my, my husband isn't home, and I'm not good with negotiations. Okay, well, it, I would just have the minivan for two days. So the goddamn car's out somewhere in the desert with some guy who's out of his head on mescaline? Well, you know me, I'm not good with negotiations. How am I supposed to get to work? Well, I don't know. He said he needed to take it and I got Look, nervous. you got yourself in this problem. I want you to go out in the desert and get my damn car well, back. I don't we know. get to the desert. I'm a talking cactus. <laughs> What's up with the car? Well met, cactus. I don't have time for you. I'm trying to talk with my friend, the van. I was going to help you. Were you? <laughs> I will not just be cool with my car. That's not an answer. But that's what he said. Just stay cool. It's still going to make the noise. I know, but I'm not good. I didn't know what to say. Well, you go back. You're but the I one just... that agreed to this. Oh, I, I didn't agree. I didn't disagree. Don't that... make me hit you again. <laughs> Don't hit me. I'm you... sorry I said that. I am too. <laughs> This is my friend, uh, bleached, uh, cow skull. Hi, how's it going? He's good with engines, if you want to ask him, I just thought. Well, I was just really trying to figure out, connect up with the van, I've... Have you checked the van belt? I appreciate the help. What does it mean to just let it be a car? What does that even mean? He just said you just let the car be its own essence, enzymes or something. Oh, no. <laughs> gobbledygook, I should hit you. 
The car sent me a dream message. Look, I'm sick of sending my wife. That's why I came. This is where it stops, friend. The car told me you would be like this. <laughs> no, it's okay. I get it now. Get out of my house. Can't we just have a 1950s relationship and just be cool? Oh, stop it. Ring, ring. Just a second. Hello? Hi, this is a talking cactus. Can I speak to the man of the house? Oh, well, of course. Why would you want to speak to the woman? The man is always the one with the answers. Yeah. Hello? Hi, talking cactus. Calling oh, from hi. The How you doing? It's a talking cactus. Yeah, the guy working on your car, I really don't think he knows what he's doing. I'd just be the careful. The point I've been trying to make. Thank you. But I could recommend a bleached cow skull that could have that fixed. I had uh, uh, some drug experiences in, in public, not in the desert, but sort of. And we said, hey, let's smoke this pot outside the largest, uh, widest base pyramid in the world is the Pyramid of Cholula. So uh, we did. Uh, we did smoke, a, a, you know, like a whole joint. <laughs> Which to me is like 10 Mardi Gras wrapped up in one. <laughs> it was a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> so we smoked a joint, heading towards the entrance to the pyramid. And um, I guess the, uh, the Aztecs or Maya, somebody know the difference? <laughs> Perfect. Uh, <laughs> The Aztecs who built this pyramid were kind of small uh, people. They were slightly smaller than we are now. I guess people are getting uh, stretched out as we continue. Like Mozart and everybody was real tiny, little people. Um, but so the Aztecs were very small. So they built this giant pyramid, but the tunnel in it, to get into it, you have to crouch down like this, and your shoulders don't fit this way, so you have to walk sideways. So you have to basically walk like this for the equivalent of four some football fields in the pitch black. Um, you have to spider walk. Now, spider walking through the pyramid not high is pretty stressful. Uh, spider walking through the pyramid very, very high with a group of German tourists in front and Germans behind who have now blocked the other way out, saying, my rucksack and stuff. Um, so it went from a normal terrifying experience through, through the addition of marijuana to uh, a, a trauma uh, uh, equivalent to like being buried alive, <laughs> basically. But being buried alive with a group of German tourists. Uh, one, once in a while when you're very, very high, someone asks you something that you know. And it's so exciting. Because there's so much, there's so much that's confusing to you everywhere, including simple logic questions, that a solid piece of information is really like a, like a diamond. It's so great. So uh, I'm standing there, we just finished the squirrel conversation, walking knickered and helmeted, and uh, a young, uh, fresh-faced Canadian gentleman uh, asked me, he said, um, where is the aquarium? And like, this is how long it takes. And I think, oh, awesome. I know where the aquarium is. Um, this is right when, right as I'm saying this, and I'm about to look like an upstanding normal person who's not tripping in the middle of Stanley Park, um, I, sparrows start attacking. <laughs> and they weren't. So I'm standing there, helmet, this, and, and sparrows start flying by my face. I go, and I can feel the beats of their, of their wings right right across like my eyelashes so i'm standing i got this and the thing and i start doing this (laughs) 
Um, and I say, uh, I guess people feed them. <laughs> and uh, so I'm, I'm convulsing and twitching and swatting. And uh, I, I, I get the directions out that it's just a, like a quarter mile on the left, twitching and shaking the whole time. And we leave, and I think, oh, I hope there was birds really there. <laughs> Dude, man, this joint, man, it's like 10 Mardi Gras. <laughs> However, the end of the joint is like Hitler's birthday. <laughs> Just don't smoke the end of the joint. That's 10 Mardi Gras, boy. You, you didn't leave me a lot here. There's not a lot left. There's like three Mardi Gras three. left. <laughs> two and a half Mardi we Gras. We got to two hours later. This is great. Thank you very much. It is just what I wanted. Into the trains. Into the train. Under the party. I just wanted the Mardi Gras party. The birthday. Inside the train, there's other stoners. Dude, hey, man. Oh. I knew I shouldn't have had the rest of that joint. <laughs> I knew what was gonna happen. Guys, guys, I'm the guest of honor. <laughs> what? Why is everyone talking amongst themselves and ignoring me? <laughs> Let's just sing happy birthday. To you. I don't want to sing happy birthday to Hitler. What are you? No, crazy? no, no. We're just gonna survive right now. Happy birthday to, to you, Hitler. Happy birthday to, to you, Hitler. Hitler. problem here in the office with buzzards. Uh, I don't know if the rest of you have noticed it, but God knows I have. Uh, I absolutely have not. Well, okay, circling above at all times, uh, swooping in sometimes, trying to pluck out our eyes or just mine. Anyone else? Never seen a buzzard. Have yes? we checked out whether there's a dead cowboy in the basement? Don't humor him. Well, that's... That's the point of this meeting. I want some brainstorming to, get to figure out this buzzard problem. Check out whether dead cowboy in basement. Have you seen? Have you seen a psychiatrist? Have I seen a what? The last time we had this meeting, I suggested a psychiatrist. I remember that, Kenny. I don't know how that's going to help, but I'll put it on the whiteboard. <laughs> well, uh, let's focus up here. We've got buzzards. Assuming the buzzards aren't entirely in your mind, there could be a dying animal. Don't humor him. Please, don't bring up those buzzards. I, I, I prefaced. I feel like, uh, I don't want to get too technical, but a cowboy is really an animal wearing a hat. So I feel like we've already got that. Okay, yeah. Kenny, Kenny. Yeah. Is there how's, how's, how's the divorce going? It's absolutely smooth as silk. Yeah. It's been a terrific divorce. Maybe you should build, you should build yeah. buzzard traps. Buzzard traps, I like that. What a, <laughs> this is ridiculous. What do you put in a buzzard trap? Oh. Uh, dead cowboy. I guess a dead cowboy. cowboy. <laughs> Uh, I'll go on a buzzer trap run. I just need petty cash. <laughs> no problem with that. Hey, let me. Who hey, will get the dead cowboy? I, I know a, a sparsely attended cowboy cemetery. <laughs> Why don't more people go to it? I would go there. Sparsely attended. All right. I'm hesitant to bring this up, but I'm sure that the buzzard won't eat an embalmed cowboy. Yeah. We gotta get a live cowboy. To kill him. Yeah. <laughs> Although it's ridiculous that we're getting a cowboy. At all. How is that ridiculous? We've gotta bait the buzzard trap somehow. <laughs> Do you realize that buzzards need a three mile radius minimum? For what? <laughs> to live! They need three miles to scatter and forage in. Well, why I... don't we just why don't we just leave the buzzards alone? Oh. I'll put it on the whiteboard, but I don't like it. <laughs> no, in fact, no, 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 no. I'm not all right. What's wrong? You been to the Kodiak Grill? 
Why? What's going on? <laughs> Have you been there? Just yes. answer a question. Yes. <laughs> There's a moose head on the wall that talks. It's supposed to entertain people. But if you ask it questions, real important questions, it answers like perfectly <laughs> what you need to know Let's to continue go there. your life. I don't believe this. Well, we to go the Kodiak I don't believe grill. This. <laughs> and would you like your regular seat right underneath right on under his head? Yes, please. Okay. Right away, you're, sir. You're not over. Ma'am, you can you sit down when you get to the table? I already don't like this place. Welcome to the Kodiak Grill. Oh. <laughs> For our jalapeno poppers. Oh, I like him. He's great. He so it's like great. a real, it's like looks like a real moose head, doesn't it? I guess it? it does. I mean, other than the fact that the ears go like that. <laughs> do you know, you know for a fact that a real moose's ears don't do hey, that. Hey, you know what? Do you want to have a good time or a bad time? A great time. Great. So, hello, moose. How are you? Hello. Oh, Welcome to the Kodiak Grill. Oh, he's re recycling what yeah, he said yeah. before. It doesn't seem like it's that. Well, don't ask him a simple question like that. I mean, give him something juicy. Uh, is my husband having an affair? Yes. <laughs> In his wallet right now, you will find a receipt from a seedy motel. <laughs> Try our jalapeno poppers. <laughs> you guys ready to order? Having fun with yeah. the loose head? Yeah, I'll have, uh... The polar bear burger. Your attempt to change the topic of conversation will not work. How about you, ma'am? Nothing for me, thank you. Well, you have to order something. For your house. Fine, I'll have the jalapeno poppers. Oh, very good. Can I see your wallet? Those are really Could good. Could I see your wallet? I would love to see your wallet right now. Could I see it? Well, well you can see it, but it's on a chain. Well, can I? Could you open it up? Let me unhook it. What is this motel? A sportsman's lodge. <laughs> this is on the cover of those roach motels. This is the motel on the cover of those roach motels. Is it really? This is the picture of the motel. <laughs> Did you go to the roach motel motel? What's going on here? It's your polar bear Thank sandwich you. and the poppers. Thank you. Listen, I brought you here to tell you that. Check I'm... out his micro expressions. They're tiny expressions he makes before he makes his real lying expression. They reveal he's untruthful. Thank you, Moosehead. Go on. Why did I bring you here? <laughs> Jerry, can I talk to you for a second? Doing a great job pushing the jalapeno poppers. Thank you. Yeah. But you're kind of bringing people down. <laughs> people don't come back after you've broken up their marriages. I just... I got one of those cell phone scanners. Go on. So it's not a huge town. I learn a lot about people. I kind of see myself as the moose of honesty. Uh, so all you got to do here is just, just work the information booth, okay? And keep your hands off your head. Okay, I'm sorry. It's just a job I used to have. It's very comfortable. Well, it scares the people at the okay. mall. You just ask. Is it weird that I'm just a bleach skull? <laughs> Okay, everyone, line up before we go into the cavern. We're not going to be able to walk uh, standing up. I'll probably so, have no problem. <laughs> yeah, that makes uh, sense. That is true, but we can't even walk straight forward. Oh. We okay. call her Stalag Mighty Might. Hey! <laughs> this okay. sounds wonderfully terrifying for everyone. Well, we don't want to be terrified. That's not a goal here. Do we not? No, we don't. The only way to get to, through the cave is to do, we have to go like this. Can the you do that? The whole time? Everybody? Like yeah, the, the whole time. Wave? It's kind of like the wave, but a little music? bit of reviews. Yes, we will be playing um, electronica. On Perfect. The way through. Perfect, yeah. Come on. yeah. <laughs> I'm not comfortable with you bringing up the rear for some reason. I'll sir. see you guys later. I'm going to go to the parking lot and wait for you guys. Why? Why? Because I'm going to die in that thing. No. Oh. You won't die. But, with that attitude, come on, that's all. It's Don't gonna you have be any fun. mobility scooters for people that are afraid? <laughs> we have one, but it's from the 30s, and no one's used it in like 40 years. 
Well, it's right I'll, here. I'll try. <laughs> All right, everyone. A vintage mobility Fact. People are supposed to look at now. We gotta get out of here. There's only one way out. Stop. What is he doing? Stop. What are you doing, sir? Stop, Stop butterfly. Going. We're stuck. There's You're rocks. using oxygen. Okay. Someone's gonna have to go up through the, the one ventilation shaft. Now. I'll go. All right. You're gonna have to be a great dancer to be able to get through that hole. I think it should be Mighty Might's the leg. I fight. can't dance. You guys know that about me. Come on, Mighty You gotta Mike. believe. I think we should all decide to die together. That was a terrible attitude. Yeah, I don't like that attitude at all. Let's Let me just... embrace it! Embrace it! I'm not quitting on it. What nah. if we just had the right song? Well, but you know I only need no dances from the 30s and 40s. Oh, wait a minute. Wait! There's Is probably an old radio! Party <laughs> human pyramid! We gotta get out there! With a really Turn big bass! It's amazing! <laughs> for our second half, so please give a warm welcome to a very funny lady, Miss Kate Walsh. Yeah. Find your ladies, they say. All right. All right, so to begin. Walsh's. 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 Mr. and Mrs. Walsh. We are Mr. and Mrs. Walsh. Hey, wait, I'd like to share Swear. some interesting information. Please, always. Matt and Kate happen to have the same birthday. It's true. Yeah. Walsh's. But she's four years older than me. I am not. Oh, Walsh's. Getting washed up, yeah. I am, I am 14 years old. <laughs> you look great. Thank you. You look great. It's the shoes. <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, again, anybody here for their first time, go ahead and throw out a word, a topic, an idea to begin the second half. I heard boyfriend. I heard boyfriend. Boyfriend. Somebody's gonna get outed. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, boyfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend. Yeah, I got nothing. No, I uh, um, <laughs> when I I over um over Christmas break I uh <laughs> my brother's already laughing over over Christmas break I uh went or or Hanukkah break for some of you uh, it was uh, I we I I'd actually my boyfriend and I had broken up and I had planned. A, a big vacation with a bunch of people, a big ski trip, so, so that I wouldn't be, you know, depressed over the holidays and lonely without the boyfriend. And then um, I, uh, like, right before, right before the break, uh, the Christmas Hanukkah break, I, um, I went to go and to have the sort of final breakup conversation. But I also, I had a gift too. I had, the, I still had a Christmas gift to give to him. And uh, so I was like. I like left the gift in the car, and uh, I was like, "Hey," and he's like, "Where's my gift?" Because he knew that we were gonna. I was like, "Oh, hold on," and I like, went and I got the gift and I sat down and I was like, "You know, you know, I really don't. You know, I, this has been great, but I think that we're both." He's like, "Yeah, we're we're breaking up. I get that." He's like, "Here," and he gave me his his gift, which was really elaborate, and uh, I was like, "Wow." Uh, 
maybe we should give this a second chance. Because <laughs> it was a really nice gift. And I, and I was like, I can't. I, I tried to give it back first. I was like, please take, take this gift back. It's way too elaborate. No, no, you have to take it. And I was like, all right. Um, you know, maybe we should give it another, another go. And, um, and the, I, I had planned a big ski trip. And, um, and so if you, know, I, you know, if you want to come with me, that, that's, you know, he's like, well, I can't go with you. And all the people know that we're breaking up. And I'm like, well, no, come with me. Everyone's going to be cool. And he's like, all right. But I'm like, listen, I, I warn you, though, I, I'm a pretty good skier. And uh, I don't, I, I planned this trip without you. And, I, and I'm going to be doing, like, uh, blue and black diamond runs. And so you're a beginning skier, so, which is cool. But you're on your own, man. Like, go. <laughs> I, I really do care about you, and I really want to make this relationship work. <laughs> because of, this, cause of these, this really nice gift you got me. <laughs> but, you know, you're on your own. Go to ski school, and that's cool, but it's every man for himself out there. And I, and I planned this for me to get over you. So if you're going to come, you got to, no problem, you know. So whatever. I, mean, I don't know why I even said yes, but uh, what, and so, so he comes up there, and um, he goes to ski school the first day. And then, like, the second day, he's like, I'm ready, you know? And I'm like, great, man. Go and find your green run partner, and I, I will see you at the bottom. And, um, and so he goes up, we go to the top, and he's, like, way up with us. He's, like, going up to the top, top, where there's not going to be a green run to get down. So then we're in that awkward position in couples that shouldn't really be a couple anyway, but we're, we're a couple where I'm trying to help him get down, and then he's getting more infuriated at me, and he's like, ah! You know, like, horrible. And I was like, all right, fine, man. Uh, and there came this, this crucial moment where I was like, I could either go down the green run with him, and he was like right there, and I'm here, and I'm like, or I can go down the blue run with my friends. We're at the same level as Keen, and I was just like, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I took the blue run, and it was as if I had sent him to hell. <laughs> because when I finally saw him again, <laughs> he was so angry with me, he would not speak to me, and I was like, that's cool, you know, I'm not gonna play that game. I'm at the, we're at the ski lodge, I'm like, woo, good day, woo! And, and then he ended up, like, literally leaving like on New Year's Eve day. He's like, I can't do this, I have to go. And I was like, I got, like, we have hella skiing in the morning. Of, like, they're picking us up at 4.30, so I understand that you have to go, but I, I have to get up, I have to get my sleep, because we're, we're like hella skiing, do you know what that's like? So that was literally the end of our relationship. He left New Year's Eve day, and there we go. Happy New Year. All right, so guys, welcome to ski school. I need you guys to be honest about your skill level, okay? Because sometimes people like to exaggerate. Best, best, what's best? Okay. <laughs> sometimes people like to exaggerate how good they are, and this is not the time to exaggerate. Somewhere between awesome and exhilarating. Okay. <laughs> I was actually born on skis. Okay, all right. Very, very ungood. Okay, good. The I'm only the one Pele I believe. Pele of skiing. Great, Pele of skiing, fantastic. So you're all here at ski school. Can, we, can, can anyone talk to me about the ski experience they've had so far? Is anyone? Gone on a, yes. I play video ski. <laughs> a lot. Okay. I purchased ski equipment. Good. <laughs> See that? Purchased quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Quite a these, bit of equipment. These are not even properly fastened, so technically I still have no experience. <laughs> You're the only one I trust. So the first thing we... I practice being quiet so as to avoid avalanches. <laughs> okay. So am I. Right. No, you haven't. You're very loud. So here's what it, we should do. Everyone, why don't we take the stance that we were going to take on the slope? So we talked about this yesterday. Everybody get in their skis. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's break this down. Let's break this down. So Sean, I want, want you to bring your legs in a little bit closer together. All right? Is that possible? And you can just even closer if you can. Even closer, if you can't, all right, we'll- Get we'll... off me. <laughs> Hold on, you're on me. Okay, Andy, you need to put your pole down to your side rather than up like a knight. I'm, with all due respect, I'm pretty sure this is right. <laughs> Chad, 
uh, this is a volleyball stance, and it works in volleyball. <laughs> what we want to do is we want to stand up and we want to keep our poles next to ourselves. Does that like, make sense? Like this? Yeah, like that. Like this. It's a serving. It's a serving. Matt, Matt, what's this about? How is this going to help us down the hill? I'm the best on the hill. Well, we do need those to be able to hold our poles, because remember we talked about balance, about using our poles? Like this? Well, maybe even if you bring the fingers in and you just grab the poles. Like that? Ow, this hurts. Why don't I forget the poles? Let's forget the poles, huh? Okay, good. So everybody, what does it feel like just to balance back and forth on your legs? I feel like a knight. Yeah. Let's forget the poles. Let's forget the poles right now. Let's forget the poles. I feel like I'm going in two directions at once. Yeah, your, your skis are pointing different ways. That's your problem. So see if you can bring your skis in towards the same direction. Can you Could do you? that? Could you tell me if someone makes mistakes so I know when to rotate serve? Again, we're not playing volleyball. We're gonna we're skiing, so we're not playing volleyball. So there's no rotating serve. Not even when somebody messes never. up. Never, not even once. Can there's you never tell a time. me when a dragon is nearby? Amy, the United States ski team died in a plane crash. No. We need a team soon. <laughs> See, sir, would you like our black diamond menu for the food adventurist? Oh, yeah, I would. This is for expert eaters. I'm a pretty good eater. Okay. Uh, dine at your own risk. <laughs> okay. No, I'm not. That is an implicit contract the minute you touch that. You we are got on a your black own. diamond! I'll take the other menu. Shish kebab! Oh! Eat it! Oh! Eat it! Oh! You, oh! you eat that food off your own chest! You eat that food off your own chest. Yeah! There's a burrito in the snake! <laughs> Come on, you can do it! You can do it! You can do it! Yeah, you saw it. Who's the shish kebab? There's hot sauce. Use the hot sauce. Bubbling cauldron and clam chowder. Bubbling cauldron chowder. What's this? More water. <laughs> Should we exchange presents? Yeah. Okay. Close your eyes. This is, you can open your eyes. This is number one of 10. And they all tell a story. And uh, I don't want to give anything away, but there's just, just open first. It's one of 10. It'll make sense when you get all 10. I made that paper and I made that box. I should be telling you I made the paper and I made the box. Oh, it's... It's a solid so, gold briefcase. It's a solid gold briefcase. I just have, I just have one present. Should I, should I give it to you now, or...? No, let's just open a few more of mine. So that's number one, solid gold briefcase. I feel like I should, I feel like I should give you... No, 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 let's open mine. This is really, this is really nice. Very nice. Okay, this... Clunk. So it's number two of ten. Two of ten. Also very heavy. Yes, very heavy. Mm -hmm. Made the box and the paper myself. <laughs> it's a bust of your head. A... <laughs> I made a bust of your head. It's number two. It makes sense. So I'll go, okay, bust of your head. <laughs> Can I can I just give you mine? No, before? let's give let's give me I'll give you two more of mine. How many did you give me? It's just one. One. Then we'll do it at the five mark. Then how about that? <laughs> is it time? Is it time? Not, no, oh, oh yes, yes, we're ready for number this three. This is gift number three. <laughs> to all the boys I loved before. <laughs> Sean Conroy, you are the best. Julio oh, yes. yes. <laughs> I'm glad that we met sometime. He's like, a little old. He forgets his words sometimes. I gotta put Julio back in his cage. Oh. <laughs> number three. This is number four. 
Number four. All gonna make sense. Oh, this one's pretty small. Solid, bro, solid gold briefcase. Bust, bust of your head. A song Holy from Julio. <laughs> Number four, a very small, still made the box. Made a small box, and the paper also made it. <laughs> oh. It's beautiful. Teeny, tiny charm bracelet with little teeny, tiny charms on it. <laughs> it's, a, well, it's, it's a ring. Well, it's, I mean, it's too small for my wrist. And it has teeny, so. tiny charms on it, and each charm was blessed by a, a different... Um, Mayan or Aztec priest. I don't know. <laughs> so that's number four. Okay, let, I'll do my fifth one and then we'll get yours. We'll get yours. Can that's I, should exciting. I, should I be trying to put this all together as we go along? No, you'll get it. You'll it get it at the end. Okay. Because <laughs> so far I'm just, I don't know. These are two. They're the same size, but they're not the same thing. <laughs> Made those myself in the papers, too. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's tennis balls, right? What? <laughs> Open up the other one. I'm a talking tennis racket. Talking tennis racket. Again, very small. Very small. Not so small. Not so small. <laughs> I know why you love tennis and you want to play, and it's, the tennis racket's amazing because it tells you about your serve and how fast it is and what you need to work on, and just the tennis balls are just to kind of go with it because I wouldn't give you something without the battery. Sure, yeah. yeah. So, what's yours? Well, this is, um... Let me just open it. It's a card. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no, I want to see what's... Probably... There's a, there's a check in there. <laughs> it's ten, ten bucks. So. <laughs> I didn't know. There's a $10 check in here. Ten dollar check. You could get you, you go if you go to Costco. You could get like seven Do you know like how expensive it is to cash a check? It isn't even worth cashing a ten dollar check. If you just deposit it. Why don't you put it, the ten dollars in? What? Why don't you even put a ten in a check? This is our any, joint bank account. <laughs> I'm sorry, miss. If you rent Tiny Roger Federer for the day, you have to pay the whole day. And he is I'm sorry than your the boyfriend regular... gave you a terrible gift, but if you rent Tiny Roger Federer, you have to use him. How could he be as expensive as... Let me as... go! <laughs> How could he be as expensive as the regular Roger Federer? That doesn't make any sense. Because there's only one in the world that's that small and that good at tennis. Thank you. <laughs> That was gift number six, I, right? Yeah, and I would like to return him because I didn't use him and no one How do I know him. you didn't use him? Bring him in. Is the seal still on him? Yes, of course. Come on, Tiny Roger Federer. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, buddy. She just went through a really harsh birthday exchange. Okay. Tiny, don't tell me how to run my business. <laughs> mother uh, is notorious for giving just really bad presents. Um, when, uh, when I was little, she would do this thing where literally she would make me make out a list of everything I want in, in great detail, like the name brand of it, the size, the color, where to buy it, how much it costs. And I would just go through, I mean, I'm 11 and making these like insane lists of like where to get you know, whatever, the giant Tinker toys or the jeans that I wanted. And then she would end up not getting me. She, one year she got me um, like a, a, a corduroy jacket with, with suede patches on the elbows. <laughs> Literally, for Chris, I'm like, I'm 11. And it was like a size 12. It was her size, essentially. <laughs> and um, the worst, though, by far, was in Chicago when I was really struggling, one of the five years that I was really struggling there. I, I asked her around Christmas time for a, um, for a care package. I, I, I she was like, I want to save you a care package. And I'm like, I don't, I don't really, I don't need a care package. I just, I just need a check, like for like 200 bucks. Like then, and just that's all I need, mom. Just give me some cash. She's like, oh, all right, all right. I'll send you some. I'll send you the check. And sure enough, she sends me a care package. <laughs> and it's not like she could even be like a regular mom with like Rice Krispie treats or like <laughs> mittens or whatever. It was like the the fear package. <laughs> and and I'm not kidding you. Like inside, uh, and I'm not exaggerating. She sent me a. Um, uh, 
like she sent me tights that would be good for like a, a, a seven year old like with, with holly wreaths on them <laughs> I mean literally I was 23 at the time and then she sent um, she sent a can that's like that big of military strength tear gas <laughs> not, I'm not lying um, because it's better it's more effective than mace and I'm like where <laughs> Where am I going to put this? I don't know. Then she sent me, um, she's a big animal rights activist, so she sent me graphic uh, pictures of, of <laughs> saying, don't buy L'Oreal or Lancome with um, like skinned rabbits, like horrible. And then, and then also, in that same package, sent me articles on women's confessionals saying how much they regretted having their abortions. Oh. Just in case. And, uh, oh, that, 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 yeah, and then she did also send, like, wooden, uh, kind of crafty button covers. There you have it. Hi, uh, look, I'm in a fight with my daughter. Uh, I want to send her something for her birthday because I've got to, but I wanted to say, what does it take to pick up the phone? And call us once in a while. Well, you could do something as subtle as a calling card. That sort of says, hey, you know, pick up the phone. No, you really want to... Oh, yeah. I want her to open it and you just really go, ah, I don't know who I am. That's the reaction I want when she opens it. I want a dark night of the soul <laughs> to, to, uh, to, to occur. She ever have any bad moments, like a um, terrible defeat in school or... Ah, uh, she wet her pants once in a game of basketball. <laughs> it was the playoffs, and everyone in town was there. You, how about this? Yeah, right. You commission an artist to recreate this moment, <laughs> maybe in watercolor. Yeah, yeah, her yeah. laying in a fetal position, whether or not that happened, just to show her destroyed <laughs> psyche. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's in a, great. In a puddle of urine. Oh, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. I'm really and seeing it. <laughs> the rest of the team is laughing, and maybe the stands... You know, yeah, yeah, wonderful. I think I'm feeling a little better now. I'd like to open some of my presents. <laughs> oh, well, uh, you want to open the gifts that we got you? Dad. Yes, hi. I was going to just ship this, but I got to see the look on your face. You know, when I was in the coma, I could still hear and dream a little bit, and I, I thought about all the good times we had together sledding and just doing, you know, dad stuff. Oh. I don't have a gift for you. Oh, you do. It's right there. No, I don't have a gift for you. Look, you know, I'm sorry I don't call you a lot. I just, oh, geez, I think no. I got a little distracted with my own life, but I'm, that's going to change. Yeah. So let's open that gift. Nope. <laughs> no, no, no. No, let's no. open it. I don't care if it's stupid. Oh, it is. It's pretty stupid. Did these windows not no, open? No, they don't open. <laughs> let's just open it. Uh -huh. Please. Well, all right, but... No, I can't possibly let you return that. That is, it's the most specific. Who else in the world would want that painting? I'll bet you a lot of kids wet their pants on a basketball court. But I think very few would have fathers as cruel as you. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, necessarily bet on that. There's a lot of bastards You're out there. Terrible. <laughs> With kids. I mean, you said you wanted to take her to the dark place of the soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know she was going to get hit by a car <laughs> and uh, spend some time in a coma there. And I can't take it back. Important realization. It has no resale value. <sighs> it's an awful, awful disturbing painting. Ah, ha, ha. The neighborhood mugger, huh? What are you talking about? Not to? this time. Wait a minute. Not this time. <laughs> Bazooka! Taxi! Taxi! Hi. Thank you very much. How about it? Taxi! Taxi! Follow that car! Just anywhere. Just anywhere. Anywhere, son. Boosh! <laughs> Hey, follow that car. Oh, the weather. Oh, the weather's been just fantastic. Pull up the rain. side. Oh, no, yeah, I don't see rain in the forecast. No okay. I'm actually getting hungry. Can you recommend a restaurant? <laughs> oh, 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 o